For generations, you are part of the glorious whale riders, trading along the fabled ice coast. Now, here's your chance to do it for your family before the deep winter is here. Do you want to learn how to play whale riders? In this video, we're going to go through the full rules for this game, and if you stay tuned till the end, you can pick up some tips along the way. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant and Stella from Apple University, bringing you a variety of quality board game videos. Now let's get to the rules for Whale Riders, game designed by Rainer Knizia, with art by Vincent Dutre and published by Grail Games. We're using a prototype copy of the game and so the rules and components you see here may not be final. In Whale Riders, players are whale-faring traders making their way up and back the ice coast, trading in goods and trying to earn pearls. Players will move along the coast, trade in money for resources, and trade back resources to complete contracts for money and pearls. The race is on before the onset of winter brings storms and closes the ports. The game will end once the last pearl is purchased from the starting port and the player with the most pearls wins. To set up, Lay the board on the table and then lay out all of the starting pearl tiles in ascending order. Next, set up the resource and storm tiles. Remove a number of storm tiles from the game based on your play account from this table. Then place all remaining storm tiles plus all the resource tiles into the cloth bag. Then randomly fill up all of the port spaces on the board with tiles drawn from the bag. If at any point during this stage of setup you draw a storm tile, return it to the bag and replace it with another tile. Additionally, for the first three ports only, if you draw a tile showing two multicolored crystals, or two pearls, or three resources, again, return that tile to the bag and replace it with another. This restriction does not apply beyond the third port, However, any storm tiles that are drawn are still returned to the bag and replaced. Continue until all spaces are full. Each player places the Whale Rider standee on the sun port facing in this direction. I'm going to show this flat in this video because we're showing you from overhead. Shuffle up the contract deck and then deal three contracts face down to each player. Give each player three coins Choose a first player at random and you're ready to play. Whale Rider is played in a series of turns. On a turn, a player takes two actions out of the five available in the game. A player may move, buy a tile, take one gold coin, fulfill contracts, or discard contracts. A player may take two different actions or may take the same action twice. After taking two actions, the player replenishes both the board and the hand of contracts, and then play passes to the next player clockwise. Play continues in this manner until the end of the game is triggered. Now let's look at the five actions in more detail. To move, the player advances their whale rider one step along the coast in the direction they are currently facing. Upon reaching the lobster port, the player changes direction to be facing back towards the sun port. Once the player has returned to the sun port, the player cannot take the move action anymore. The game is played in a single trip up and back the coast. To buy a tile, the player chooses any one tile in the current port of their whale rider and pays a number of coins based on the number next to the tile. This can be 0, 1, 2 or 3. The player pays the money, takes the tile, and then leaves that space empty for the moment. This won't be refilled until the replenishment phase at the end of the player's turn. Players in the sun port may also use this action to buy starting pearl tiles, and the cost here ranges from between 1 and 7. However, this is only available once the player has left the port and returned. Players cannot do this at the start of the game before leaving the sun port. The third option is to take a coin, and to do this the player simply takes a coin. 
The fourth option is to fulfill one or more contracts for a single action. To fulfill a contract, reveal it and place it into a face-up stack of completed contracts. Then discard tiles showing at least as many resources as shown on the contract. Here the player could fulfill this contract with these tiles but would not get anything back for overspending on kelp. Alternatively, the crystal resource can be spent as any other resource. So here this contract could be fulfilled with these tiles. Discard the tiles and then immediately gain the money depicted on the contract. The number of pearls will be counted up at the end of the game. Within a single action, the player may then continue fulfilling contracts from a hand in the same way. Each contract is fulfilled separately, so any overspend on the cost of the first contract cannot contribute to the cost of the second. Note also that when spending the double crystal tile as wild, you must spend both of those crystals as the same resource. So this contract could not be fulfilled with just three tiles, you would need to add this fourth one in order to fulfill it with an overspend. This contract, showing the grey resources icon, is fulfilled by discarding this many resources of any type. And this contract, showing the black tiles icon, is fulfilled by discarding this many tiles, irrespective of the resources on them. The final action available is to discard contract cards from hand, and for a single action the player may discard any or all contract cards from hand into the discard pile. After taking two actions, the player enters the replenishment phase. The player redraws to a hand of three contract cards to replenish any which were either fulfilled or discarded during the turn. Then, if any tiles were taken from a port, the player replenishes the port. First, slide any remaining tiles down to the lowest possible number, then fill the empty spaces at random from the bag. Unlike in setup, there is no restriction on the sorts of tiles which can be placed out during the game. It is through this process that storm tiles will enter the game. Storm tiles cannot be purchased or removed from the board. They will simply migrate towards the low scoring spaces as the game goes on, eventually making resources more expensive to purchase. Some ports may even become completely blocked with storms by the end of the game. When replenishing the sun port, the tiles simply move down to the lowest cost spaces. No new tiles enter the game here. After replenishing, play passes to the next player. Once the final pearl tile has been purchased from the sun port, the game ends immediately. Players count up their final number of pearls by adding up the pearls on any fulfilled contracts, as well as any pearls on tiles purchased at the ports, and tiles from the sun port. Leftover money and resources do not count. The player with the most pearls wins, and in the event of a tie, whoever has the most leftover money wins, is still tied most leftover tiles. The Kickstarter campaign for Whale Riders will also come with some potential unlockable variants for the game, including individual player goals, which will give them extra pearls for completing certain types of contracts, and special action tiles which give you different options at some of the other ports on the board. We won't cover these variants in this video, but they will be available if the Kickstarter meets its goals. And that's how to play Whale Riders. We hope that you enjoyed the video, and we hope that you enjoy playing. At the time of filming, Whale Riders is about to be launched on Kickstarter, so we'll put the link in the description below when it's live so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the people in the corner to do so and hit the bell icon so you'll be one of the first to know when we have new exciting videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games photos and reviews. And finally, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comments section below. Until next time.